my um, journey began in September for the last six months. I have been hemorrhaging. My um, journey began in September for the last six months. get started in worship.
joining us in person and online. Um, we're so happy that you're here today. Um, it's Family Worship Sunday, so the kiddos are gonna be joining us, and I think the youth too. Um, parents, this is an incredible opportunity for you to come alongside your kids and nurture the heart of worship in them. Um, that's one of the reasons we have Family Worship Sunday is so that you can be part of growing their spiritual journey and not just have us do that. Um, yeah, so we encourage you, please keep your kiddos with you during this time in service. Um, that way you can take full advantage of this time. Um, if you guys have any prophetic words or senses, you guys can text or email them to our um, online pastor who is Kara today. Um, the phone number is 720-500-2492 and it's words at bridgeway.us. Um, yeah, so Jesus, I thank you so much for the opportunity we get to come together as a family and worship you, to honor you and just glorify you today together. I ask that as we worship you, that we would remember that the only thing we're here for is you, nothing else, Jesus. Not anyone around us, just you. So um, I thank you for all you're gonna do today and all the amazing transformations and healings, both physically and emotionally that are gonna take place today, Jesus, amen.
we're going to enter a time of communion together. So I just want to set the stage for this. Uh, Ron, if you'd come up, I'd like you to, you to share the impression you had. And then I'll, um, I'll set the stage for communion after this. I think this is the Lord because it hit me so strongly when I was sitting with her during worship. And it's this issue. If you step into a bonfire, you get destroyed, right? The fire is not mad at you. It's not trying to hurt you. It's just the nature of the fire. And the dilemma of mankind is that we, we want the presence of a holy God, but we have no way to do that. Because we know in the scriptures, if you approach that Lord, the presence will kill you. You touch the ark, the presence of the Lord, you die. The ark's not mad at you. It's not trying to hurt you. It's not judging you. It's the nature of the presence. So what Jesus did was the impossible thing. He rose from the dead to create a path that we can enter the presence of the Lord and not die. What happened at Pentecost? Pentecost, the presence of the Lord was the flame, remember that? And it split apart and landed on the heads of everyone in the room. The presence of a holy living God, the fire we cannot approach, entered them and they didn't die. So we take the presence of the Lord that would normally kill us. What Jesus did, contemplate, he enabled us to dwell in the presence of a holy consuming presence like the burning bush and not die. And that is the hunger of the heart of mankind. So soberly come and take this and, and realize the impossible miracle that Jesus did for us so that we get to do that. It's a good word. So there was a holy fire burning continuously in the temple, the first temple era and the second temple era, there was no holy fire. But Jesus brought that. But when the fire came, it cleansed all those things. Like Moses, when the fire came in the burning bush, all of his junk, his fear, his doubt, his insecurity, his unbelief was literally cleansed as he stood and dialogued with the Lord. So as we come to the table today, just let the Lord's fire if you will, burn away the things that need to be gone, your insecurities, your fear, the disappointments, the things that may hold you back, and uh, trust him at the same time that his presence is here to renew and to rejuvenate you and set the fire of his presence in you and on you for the world around you. So Lord, we thank you as we come to the communion table today, the broken body of the Lord, which was broken for us, the blood of Christ, which is the cup of the new covenant, the forgiveness of our sins, the ability to step through the fire, to touch, see the Lord face to face, the veil rent and not be consumed. So Lord, would you consume those things in us that don't align with the kingdom? And would you allow us to be refreshed and renewed in your presence as we come to communion? And I thank you, Lord, that this is, a, this is a season where you're just doing that in life after life. And we're just grateful we come with gratitude today. So anytime in the next song, there are some tables at the right of the, in front of the sanctuary, in the middle back here, and then usually at the back. Uh, just make your way as families with your kids, with others' parents, as Paige encouraged us. Talk to your kids about the cleansing fire of the Lord and his renewing presence. And just allow him to do that. There was a word earlier that there was a new chapter um, being set today in the life of the people of Bridgeway. And so let's just let the fire consume the things of the old chapter, but the generational blessings 
pass through the fire, the promises of God pass through the fire, the purposes of God, the calling, all those good things pass through that fire and we're renewed and strengthened in him. Just come to the table with that in mind today. So Father, we thank you for the body and blood of Christ. We come entering a new chapter in the blood of Christ, in the way that Jesus made. And Lord, we ask that the old things that need to be removed would be removed this morning. Even supernaturally, as we take the elements, Lord, break off things that need to be broken off and set us on a new path. We thank you for this in Jesus' name. Amen. So come as family, as friends. If you see a newcomer or someone you don't know sitting near you, find them. Don't come alone. Just gather with them. Make your way to the tables as we continue in worship.
I'm gonna have the worship team continue to play in the background, but I'm gonna be doing something for the foreseeable future where during worship, I felt like the Lord prompted me to be praying, praying for revival, praying for his presence, praying for an increase, praying for his glory to fall. As um, things are shaking around us, it's more important that we just continue to ask the Lord. So I'm just gonna pray, we'll let the, the team continue to just play behind me quietly. So Father, I thank you. I thank you, Lord, that you've made the way, Jesus, for us. I thank you, Lord, that you desire your glory to fall in this house, in our households, in our families, in our marriages, upon our children, in our city. Lord, we thank you for an increase of the manifestation of your presence. Lord, we have just tasted the very tip of an iceberg, Lord. We ask that your presence would be so strong in our lives that here that we could not even stand in your presence. We pray, Father, that you would prepare us for your glory that's coming. Lord, let the fear of the Lord in our region draw people to you. Would you impact our city, our state, our region? Lord, we're just gonna take the wind for today that even shut down churches on the West End because of you know, controlled power outages just to avoid a fire, Father, that it's a sign that you're gonna move in our state. Holy Spirit, come in deeper ways, come in power, overwhelm us, touch us, renew us. We thank you for your deliverance. Lord, for all of those that need deliverance of anything, bring that freedom in Jesus' name. Rush in, come in further. Holy Spirit, fall on us with your fire. And Lord, I thank you for the sign of the eclipse on the first of Nisan tomorrow, that it's, it's um, there's a road called Salem, which is Jerusalem's name, that surrounds a place called Devil's Lake. It's the intersection of the 2017 and the 2024 full eclipse. Two, two, two minutes in that spot exactly tomorrow. And so Father, we thank you. We thank you, Father, that it's a sign that the peace of the Lord, the reign of Christ, is passing through 26 Salem's tomorrow. We thank you for that, that it's a sign that God wants to move and that Christ is at the center of our nation. So God, would you move? Would you come with your power? Thank you that you're inviting our nation to accept Christ in the heartland. So Lord, do this in our heart, do this in our house, do this in our church, we pray. It's in Jesus' name.
so much better than we could ever imagine, ask, or even think. You're so much better, God. There's a word that was sent to us this morning. Um, we just want to honor that and release Psalm 107 verse 20. It goes along with the prayers that Papa Peter just prayed this morning. He sent his word and healed them. He sent his word and healed them and delivered them from their destructions. Hallelujah. Yeah, it's so good. Well, feel free to be excited. Uh, <laughs> he, he sent his word and healed them and he delivered them from their destructions. This morning in prayer, I felt like the Lord impressed his words upon us that he wants us as daughters and sons of God to step in to the presence that Ron released and to step up and to step forward. So we're going to step in to the call, the position that the Lord has placed us, all of us, which is the sons and daughters of God. We, it, is, it is time to step forward. I, I also felt you know, there, there, there are so many of us are fighting battles, personally, family-wise, and, and, and whatever it might be. It is time for us to rise. It's a prophetic act. Do you mind if you stand? Is that okay? Please. Thank you. Yeah. We're going to rise and step in to what God has called us to step in and step up to the place where God has us and to step forward because we're not going back. We are not going back. We are stepping forward. And, and Matthew, eight, Matthew um, 18, verse 18 and 19, it says, Assuredly, I say to you, whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven and whatever you loose on earth will be loosed in heaven. I mean, come on, whether it's, this is true or not, we got to make a decision. It is time to step in and to step forward. And again, I say to you, if two of you agree, can I ask, 
Can I ask, um, as appropriate it is, please, could you just hold hands of your neighbor? We are going to agree. Even if it is two or three, that's okay. Hold your hands. There's something with unity. There's something in we are standing as a church in unity and we are proclaiming the truth of the gospel over our lives. And we want to say that we believe this. God, we believe this. And we are not, we are not here just wishy-washy, but we believe this, God, because this is your word. Again, I say to you that if two of you agree on earth concerning anything, Bible says concerning anything that they ask, that it will be done for them by my Father in heaven. Father, right now, let's pray. Father, in Jesus' name, we touch on one thing. We agree with every prayers that, that, the, that Father Peter prayed as Father in this house. We touch on the same thing and we ask, Father, we thank you for revival. We thank you for opening of hearts. We thank you for healing and deliverance. In the name of Jesus Christ, we thank you, God. We, we believe you have already sent your word and you have healed us, God. And we want to step up, step in, and step forward in the name of Jesus.
absolutely overwhelmed. God, have all of us. You can have all of us. You can have everything. It is yours. This church is yours. Our hearts are yours. A few minutes ago when we were having communion, I was taking communion with my friend Kat and we were just praying and she said that she had seen a large cup, a communion cup, and it just poured out, washing away our past, washing everything away. The power of His blood is enormous. And then she saw the tomb and she saw the stone, but the stone wasn't normal. It consisted of the entire body of Christ, making the way, rolling away so that He might enter in and resurrect the church once and for all. Thank you, Jesus, for your resurrection power. I thank you, Jesus, for the power of your blood. And I thank you, God, that you will never relent until you have every bit of us, all of us. I thank you for the fire. God, I thank you for what you are doing in this earth, Lord. God, we don't wanna miss one moment. We don't wanna miss it. Lord, we are yours. Bridgeway is yours. You can have your way with us. And we bless you in the mighty, powerful, matchless name of Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen and amen. Wow. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Yeah, give him up. Let's give him praise in this place. Thank you, Lord. Woo. So go ahead. Greet everybody around you. Thank you, worship team. Thank you for taking us to the throne room. Yeah, we bless you. Yeah, we'll be back in a minute.
morning, Bridgeway. Good morning. Can I get everybody's attention? I see somebody waving. Peter, hello, Peter. <laughs> Good morning. Good morning, everybody. Let's go ahead and grab your seats if you can. Quiet down just a minute. We have some great announcements today, great things to talk about. My name is Christy Joy, and I am one of the pastors on staff here at Bridgeway. I am so happy to be here with you. Every time I come to Bridgeway, it's just another, oh, I just can't ever wait to get here. It's just so amazing what God is doing here. Who in the room is brand new, first time visitors? Can I get you to raise your hand if you're here for the first time right here? Yeah, welcome. We're so glad to have you. <laughs> Keep your hand raised just for a minute. We're gonna, we have a gift to come give you. Yeah, if you'll just keep your hand raised, thank you. Um, there's some, there are some cards on the back of your chairs. If you'll grab that for us, please fill that out. We have, um, we would love to get in touch with you and yeah, see how you are. Did anybody lose their to toupee yesterday, by the way? <laughs> uh, it was an extra glue day. <laughs> that wind was strong, right? <laughs> <laughs> it was a strong wind day. <laughs> oh, oh, did you? All right. <laughs> You're so crazy. <laughs> hey, this painting over here this morning um, from the painter, look at this. This is so beautiful. A big castle on the sea. Um, the, he said that God wants to tell us that he is our fortress and to rest in his protection. Even when you can't see or sense it, he says, trust that he has you surrounded by his protection. Amen, that's so good. Wow, I love that. Okay, so um, just a few things that we need to announce. We have a newcomer's luncheon next week, so if you are brand new to Bridgeway and you haven't come to the luncheon yet, we would love to connect with you after church in the great room, and so all you have to do is sign up online. You should have received an email. If you haven't, you'll get one this week again, and so just reminding you about that, we would love as a, as a church and a staff to, to come and meet with you and just give you encouraging words and love on you, get to know who you are, and and see how we can speak into your lives, how we can get you more connected here at Bridgeway. We're, again, so glad that you're with us. Also, we have um, the need for volunteers for Kids Church. So we need more volunteers for Kids Church. So if you are you know, interested in giving your time there, it doesn't take much. You know, And these little people are our future, right? I believe the children are our future. Teach them well, let them lead the way, <laughs> says Whitney Houston. <laughs> and the Lord loves our children. So if, if you would like to volunteer, please reach out to page at bridgeway.us. And or, or you can visit bridgeway.us forward slash King's Kids to apply for that because you will need to pass a background check for that. Also, we have our healing rooms that are open after church. This is an incredible moment. If you have pain in your body, if you have things that you, you know, neck pain, back pain, cancer, anything like that, every Sunday after church, we have our healing rooms open. Um, and with that said, there are so many times that we don't get to hear what God is doing. We haven't heard the testimonies. We wanna show you one right now. September for the last six months, I have been hemorrhaging um, and found myself on February 1st in the emergency room receiving a blood transfusion and um, being diagnosed with a mass the size of a small orange. And during this time frame, I had been reaching out to the Lord, praying, um, seeking the Lord, um, going to multiple doctors, and um, was kind of um, frustrated with the process. 
I started with um, coming with the diagnosis that St. Joseph's Hospital gave me on February 1st. I sent my son up here and asked him to stand in proxy for me because I was too weak to come to church. And um, he prayed with Pastor Peter, Papa Peter. And um, Papa Peter said, is she struggling with being disappointed? Is she struggling with unforgiveness? Is she struggling um, in areas with bitterness? And so I took that to heart and I reflected on that. And there were some areas in my life that I felt like I needed to repent and get right with the Lord. My son also prayed with Pastor Joel that day. And this was probably, I think, February 4th. And Pastor Joel said, the next time your mom goes to the doctor, the mass will be gone. And so I stood on that too. And I knew I needed more um, of the community. And so I started to pray, you know, Lord, why am I going through this trial? The Lord told me that, the, that I was going through a trial back in October when I was praying with him. And so I said, Lord, why am I going through this trial? And I just, I didn't get anything, but I knew to lean into community. And that was really hard because I was so um, sick and so weak. It was quite the effort to come to church and, and lean into that, but I came. And I went to the prophetic community night in um, February and they all as a team prayed for me and they prayed breakthrough for me. And they declared that the mass would dissipate and leave. So now I've had pastor, Peter, I've had Pastor Joel, I've had the prophetic community with Pastor John. And then I started going to Awakening Heart to their team um, every other week. And I had a team of three that stood with me and began to see where there were open doors and things and the attack of the enemy. And um, it stood for me that the mass would leave. So when I went in on March 12th and met with the oncologist, she said that it looked like cancer, um, that the mass um, kind of was, um, it didn't look like an, any other kind of mass. And that um, they wanted to do a biopsy and surgery. And I asked them to do an MRI because I was standing and believing for God to heal me. And they said, it usually takes weeks to get in for an MRI. We'll probably have the biopsy before we do the MRI. And I said, can you do it today? Has someone canceled? Can you call? I'll go anywhere in Colorado. This was March 12th. March 13th, they got me in down in Lone Tree and I was able to do an MRI. March 14th, they called me and said, there's no mass. <laughs> the Lord and I had received a prophetic word back in November of 2023 here from one of the prophetic team members and I thought on that prophetic word the Lord brought it back to me about there being a shift in the tone of what the Lord was doing in my life and I sat with it and I asked the Lord you know Lord what does this mean and and what was the takeaway from this experience? Because I would have served you whether you healed me or not. Uh, my heart is wholly after yours. So what's my takeaway from this? And this was my takeaway that went along with the prophetic word that I was given. Community. We need to lean into community. There are assignments that we will be given by God to walk through. Mine is ministering to people. I'm a licensed professional counselor. And there were assignments that he had given me that I needed my brothers and sisters in Christ to come alongside me and to pray with me and have insight that I, like at the time, didn't have. And so that was my takeaway. So I pray that this blesses someone today. I pray for your healing and if you're out there and you, you have a mass or you've been diagnosed with cancer, you're standing a proxy for someone in your family who's had that diagnosis. And I pray that God will do for you what he did for me. And I pray that you lean into the church family for the support that you need. Amen. Wow. Yeah, let's... Wow. You know, I 
love. It wasn't, it wasn't just, it, she found community every place she went at Bridgeway. It was awakened heart. It was the prophetic community. It was right here at the altar. She found Jesus everywhere she went here at Bridgeway. We love being a family, love it. All right, at this time, we're gonna invite Papa Peter to come on up and let's extend your hand and pray for him. So good. Jesus, wow. God, we are so grateful for this man who has stewarded healings, deliverance, so many things, the word, your word, God teaching so many, raising people up to be disciples, raising people to be leaders, to send them out, God. We thank you for this man. God, I pray that you would speak to him this morning, God. Let his mouth be a conduit to our hearts, pierce and burn deeper within us, God. Through him, we bless him this morning. Bless him with the mind of Christ. We bless him, God, with more blessings for his family, his children, his grandchildren. Lord, we bless this word. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Thank you. Uh, that's a good testimony, really good. Uh, actually, I want to. Um, I don't want to miss an opportunity to steward that into that. Um, I believe God's reopening wells for healing of cancer. There was one period. In fact, um, I saw Jeff Mays earlier. Are you sit, still sitting over there? He slipped out. He was uh, healed of cancer. Here we had we had five people healed of cancer in three weeks, and he actually <laughs> he actually went in for surgery, and they took out a section of his colon and then apologized afterwards that they had, that there was no cancer left in there. Somebody else had the exact same testimony. They went in and they, um, they uh, got an MRI, just insisted, just like Misty did, and found no cancer. And then someone else was visiting from another church and they took, they asked me, they had faith, they said, can you pray over this prayer cloth? I heard the testimonies of cancer being healed. Somebody with fourth stage cancer at um, what was then Cherry Hills Community Church, they put it under his pillow and he was healed of fourth stage cancer. So is there anyone with cancer in the room that I just would just like to go after this for a minute? Um, yeah, stand up if you have cancer um, or recovering, just one, that's good news. We, we just asked that there, there's two. Would you guys get some people's hands around them? We're just gonna pray. Anybody online, um, if you could, uh, yeah, you, you're gonna stand in proxy, that would be fine. Stand in proxy for people. Um, thank you, yeah, definitely stand with Kevin right there. Um, we're just gonna go after this. Whenever you hear testimonies of something, a testimony is an invitation for God to do it a second time, do it again, a third time a fourth time. So Father, right now in the name of Jesus, would you open up that well of healing of cancer in Jesus' name? Would you, would you release again the fire of healing for cancer in bodies? Lord, we thank you for this testimony. Lord, we know sometimes there's heart work that's needed. Sometimes there's word curses that need broken. So Lord, whatever is needed in the spirit realm over these individuals standing, those watching us online today, we just, go, we just take authority over that cancer, cancerous cells in their body in Jesus' name. We command it to go. Tumors shrink. Blood disorder, cancer be released. Prostate cancer be healed. Any form of cancer right now, we ask it to be healed, God, in Jesus' name. Breast cancer be healed. Lymphoma cancer is healed. Any form of cancer that God, it's just not acceptable in the body of Christ. And we thank you that there's a purging fire that is cleansing. And we just say this is an attack from the enemy against the fullness of function for these. 
Lord, we bless those that are standing in proxy that uh, they could lay hands on those they're standing for, that there'd be healing and be released, those online. We bless you with healing from cancer right now in Jesus' name. Yeah. Do you want to you want to pray it? I'll let you pray it. We're gonna keep praying on this. Oh, we're just this is a good word. I'm just gonna let Amy declare it. Go ahead and speak loudly. So, Father God, as the body of Christ, we repent for coming into agreement with assignments from the kingdom of hell. We Any repent darkness. for coming into agreement with diagnoses of this world that are meant to steal, kill, and destroy. We rebuke oh, those diagnoses in the name of Jesus. We do not claim those and that which was loosed. God, we repent for ever coming into agreement or speaking that over our own bodies or anyone else's in the body. Yes, Lord. God, we just speak life and we come into agreement with the kingdom of heaven. And in 3 John 2, it says that your desire above all else is that we would be in health. So God, we speak and loose with our tongues right now life and life abundantly from the top of their head to the tip of their toes, God, and everywhere in between, all the way down to the cellular level. We speak and loose life right now. We cancel any demonic assignment to bring any sort of sickness or disease of any kind that was already paid for, that Jesus was whipped for in Isaiah 53. That he died for every single one of those that is not our portion. God, we thank you that healing is ours. We grab hold of that, we claim it, and we now from this day forth speak life over our body. We do not have any of those things. They are not ours to claim, we have life. And you have already established yeah. all these things in the book of life for our lives. And so God, we come into agreement with long life that your Psalm 91, I believe 16 says, God, we come Amen. into agreement Amen. with Amen. your word and only your word over our life in Jesus' name. Amen, thank you, Amy. We also pray for any skin cancer, any melanoma, anybody with that condition, Pray for Brittany, Sanderlin, and Proxy for the melanoma in her eye. We ask for healing. Thank you, Jesus. So, Father, we thank you for the completed work of Christ. We thank you that by his stripes we're healed, 1 Peter 2, 4. We thank you, Lord, that, um, that when Jesus healed all infirmities, he said, by his stripes we're healed. We thank you, Father, that... Um, that's Matthew 8, 17. We thank you, Father, that healing is the children's bread. Give us today the bread that we ascribe to heaven or the millennium reign. Bring it today. We thank you for fullness of healing, fullness of freedom in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, we just bless you. Uh, thank you for doing that um, with us. Well, I'm looking at the clock, it's already 11.05, and I actually have a message I think I'm supposed to give today, so you're gonna have to bear with me. Peter, I just feel the Lord strongly say, anybody in this room that's a cancer survivor needs to stand up, I'm 23 years cancer All right, her word is, she's 23 years cancer free. Are there any cancer survivors in the house? Right here, right here, right here, right here, right here, right there. Cancer survivors, thank you, God. Thank you, God. Right there, right there, right there. Look at that, guys. Take that if you've been prayed for today. There are cancer survivors in the room. <laughs> I feel like uh, uh, just reopening that well of um, healing and of... Um, Somebody gave me a word during worship. It just spoke about wells opening. When we were at Thomas Jefferson, 
Thomas Jefferson, 22 years ago, is when the Holy Spirit broke out in our church. It's been 22 years that we've had a movement of that. And I've been asking the Lord again for a move that astounds us, that will potentially chase half of you away because it's gonna be so scary. Um, I'd rather have the scary power in, in half a church than... Uh, <laughs> so, Lord, just redig those wells of healing. That we, Lord, I remember the day that we had a metal rod out of a back during worship. The woman screamed and it disappeared. I remember the day we had encounters at different parts of the sanctuary. I remember the day, the first day um, the spirit came, someone got healed of chronic pain that they'd had for three years. Someone got saved in worship. Seven backs got healed of congenital scoliosis. On the very first day you came, Lord, would you open the wells of healing? Would there be a flow of the Holy Spirit of power and also of the fire of God for cleansing, for deliverance, for freedom? Lord, we just say we're not content with a powerless church, Lord. We've had a wave, now we ask for a tsunami. We ask for something bigger. Lord, I'm asking you for a, an epic biblical kind of revival move. We thank you for that. Open that well again in Jesus' name. You know, it's interesting, this, the, the staff at the time came into unity, it's what caused it. Um, I had gone to three locations, those of you that have been through Discovery remember this. I had gone to Toronto to ask their forgiveness for the movement I was part of at the time, the vineyard cutting off, what God was doing in, in, in that movement. And I then went to see Mike Bickle and the Kansas City prophet people to ask forgiveness for our movement cutting off the prophetic move of God that was happening at the time there. Um, I then went to Peter Wagner who had taught with John Wimber at, um, at Fuller Seminary and hosted Signs, Wonders, and Church Growth. And I asked for forgiveness of all locations for how the movement I was part of had cut off the Holy Spirit and, and said, would you pray for us for revival? All three places forgave us, prayed for us. And uh, when I came back, I announced revival was coming to the church. And it didn't happen that day. And I said, Lord, what's up? He said, your leadership's divided. They're not on board with this fully. And so I, I literally called them into a room. I said, any of you that are not up for the Holy Spirit coming in power, you can leave the leadership right now. I'll dismiss you. I'm going after this with everything we have. And they repented on the spot. The Holy Spirit lands on the three elder couples that were in dissension. The rest of us sat there going, like, why not us, Lord? But it was this, al <laughs> it was this alignment thing. I literally, we came in and our, our, our hour and 10 minute service went to three and a half hours for the next five years. It just was unstoppable what God did. And I, I, I feel like the Lord wants to open that again. In the midst of shaking, we need Holy Spirit-driven churches where the Spirit of God is coming in power and moving and sending an army. And I heard the yes as Christy Joy prayed. I heard the, we're all together, like whatever it takes. We won't relent, Lord, until you send it all. Um, so Lord, we just declare that this is a house of unity. We want everything you can bring our direction. We ask you to open the well. Lord, I pray people will have trouble getting out of the sanctuary because of the presence. They'll have trouble getting into the church from the lobby because of the presence. Lord, we don't need manifestations, but what we need is your presence because it changes everything. I pray people will get sovereignly delivered when they walk through these doors. Lord, that people would get rid of things that have plagued them for decades, that literally they'll be set free, God, that prodigals will come home, that lifetime ailments would be healed in the presence, God, that hearts would be renewed and fresh, refreshed, God. We won't settle for Nerf Church. We need the real sword of the Lord, God. Come with the sword of the Spirit and the Word of God, the, the double things, Lord. Come with your power. Do it again, Lord, we've heard of your fame, we've heard of your deeds, we have our testimonies, but Lord, part the heavens and come down, let the mountains melt like wax. Lord, come with your power and your fire and send the spirit without measure in this place, God. We need your glory, the full manifestation, God. We wanna see cancer healed in our city, we wanna see salvation, the lost come home. We want our families to be 
blessed and restored. We thank you for your fire, God. Come with your fire, the fire of the Holy Spirit. Move with power. We say yes, God. We say yes. Hmm. This isn't in my message, but I'm going to read it. I don't know if I'll get to the message today. <laughs> this is in Zechariah 1 and 2. How long, O oh Lord, will you, this is uh, chapter one, verse 12. Will you not have mercy on Jerusalem and the cities of Jerusalem? God, if you're going through 26 cities named Salem, which is the early name of Jerusalem on Monday with a total eclipse, which was a sign you're going through a city named Jonah, one of two in North America and four cities of Nineveh. Lord, we ask for repentance and we ask for a move of God, Lord, have mercy, God. Jonah cried out. There was an eclipse in the time that Jonah went to Nineveh and they repented. God, let our nation and our city repent. And it says here, how long will you not have mercy? The Lord answered and said, I am zealous for Jerusalem and for Zion with a great zeal. I'm exceedingly angry at the nations who are at ease for I was a little angry, but they've helped but with evil intent. I am returning to Jerusalem. I'm returning to the church with mercy. My house shall be built, says the Lord of hosts. A surveyor's line shall be stretched out over Jerusalem and proclaim again, saying, thus says the Lord of hosts. That's the heavenly armies. My city shall again spread out through prosperity. The Lord will again comfort Zion and will again choose Jerusalem. Then I raised my eyes, chapter two, verse one, and looked and behold, a man with a measuring line in his hand and he said, where are you going? He said to me to measure Jerusalem to see its width and its length. And there was an angel who talked with me going out and the other angel was coming to meet him who said, run, run and speak, the young man said. Jerusalem shall be inhabited as towns without walls because of the multitude of men and livestock in it, for I, the Lord, will be a wall of fire around her, and I will be a glory in her midst. Let's read that again, verse five. For I say, the Lord will be a wall of fire around her, and I will be a glory in her midst. Lord, let there be a wall of fire around this house, around our households, our families, our children. Lord, we don't need walls because the Lord is our protection. Lord, I saw on TikTok Dwayne Johnson walking through the fire, and it was, just a, it was a show, but Lord, we want to be like the fire of Daniel chapter 6, when Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego were thrown into the fire, and behold, there was a man standing in there, and they were bound, but they were unharmed, and they didn't even smell like smoke, because Jesus is the fourth man in the fire. And it doesn't matter what the enemy's going to do because God wants the church to come and have his glory. And Lord, we thank you that it was a witness to Nebuchadnezzar. And we thank you, Father. Actually, Daniel 6 is the lion's den. It's earlier that the boys are thrown in the fire. But Lord, we thank you that you're going to do that. And I just declare it. The Lord will be a wall of fire around this church, around the churches we're in partnership with. We'll just declare the rock, the encounter, uh, restoration, the different churches we know where Shane Farmer's pastoring, the House Denver, uh, City on a Hill, uh, Church of the Lookout. God, we just bless the churches, even those that are not meeting for fear of fire today with wind, we just declare they'll have a spirit fire. We thank you for that in Jesus' name. Goes on to say, look up, up, flee from the land of the north, says the Lord, for I have spread you abroad like the four winds of heaven. Up, Zion, escape you, dwell in the daughter of Babylon. That's a word for deliverance. Lord, we declare those that are in bondage will be delivered from Babylon, the world system, in Jesus' name. 
For thus says the Lord of hosts, he sent me after glory to the nations who plunder you. For he who touches you touches the apple of my eye, of his eye, for surely I will shake my hand against them. And they shall become spoil for their servants, and you will know that the Lord of hosts has sent me. So Lord, take vengeance against our adversaries. Lord, what the devil has captivated, set free your people with deliverance and set them free because they are the apple of your eye. And Lord, we just declare that the spoil shall be restored. What the locust has stolen, there'll be a restoration that the enemy shall be plundered and they'll come out of Egypt and Babylon with victory and of increase because God is a God who delivers. I just declare, we've just heard testimonies of deliverance. I declare the deliverance will sweep through this house. Sweep through this house, sweep through this place, sweep through this city. Those that need the deliverance presence of the Lord, it will come. Second week, the spirit came. Someone walked in, a spirit manifest, and they got delivered on the spot. Lord, do it again in our day. Send deliverance. Everyone here, you can just put your hand on your chest if you feel like you need deliverance in some area. Any habitual sin, anything like that. The wall says, my fire, my burning bush is surrounding you. I will surely set my captives free. I've heard their groaning in the land of Egypt, the land of Babylon, and I am setting my people free. The zeal of, my, of the Lord shall accomplish this, Lord. Set deliverance on those that need freedom in the name of Jesus. Thank you that Jesus said he came to proclaim liberty for the captives and freedom for those who were bound, healing for the brokenhearted. Thank you, Father, that you're taking mourning and ashes and turning it into joy and freedom. We're, thank you that this is the planting of the Lord that will reflect the glory. So, Lord, we thank you that you're doing that deliverance work. Let's read it on. It says, Sing and rejoice, O daughter of Zion, for behold, I'm coming and will dwell in your midst. Many nations shall be joined to the Lord in that day. They shall become my people, and I will dwell in your midst. Then you will know that the Lord of hosts has sent me to you. So, Lord, thank you that you want to dwell in our midst. Dwell in this church building. Lord, let the Shekinah glory happen here, Father. Let the glory of the latter house be greater than the glory of the former house. Lord, we are not content with a second temple reality where there's no ark, there's no presence, there's no holy fire, there's no um, Ruach HaKodesh, there's no Holy Spirit. God, we must have your presence. Lord, we're not content with the foundation of an altar stone. We thank you for that picture of the stone being the body of Christ. Let your presence land, let the ark of your presence land on your church that you might find a dwelling place in us, God, and that you would dwell in our midst and that the nations will come to the light that they see on your house. Thank you, Lord, that you are sending this word. And it says, and the Lord will take possession of Judah as an inheritance in the land and will again choose Jerusalem. Be silent, all flesh of the earth before the Lord, for he's aroused from his holy habitation. So Lord, arouse yourself and come. Part the heavens and do a new work in our day. Cause your spirit to fall in our families, in our lives. Lord, we say yes, we are the ark of the presence. Lord, we wanna be mobile carriers of that ark. It's supposed to be on the shoulders of men. Do it, Lord. Hmm. There's a Zechariah one says um, he sees a picture with horses, red, sorrel, white, by the way, hint, revelation. Man stood amongst the myrtles. These are the ones whom the Lord has sent to walk to and fro from out the earth. It says, 
It's the deliverance of the Lord. He talks about the horns that have scattered Israel and Jerusalem, the horns that have scattered, the craftsmen will be taken care of. So Lord, I thank you that those things that oppose the advance of your kingdom, you are sending angels from the north, the south, the east, and the west, that the armies of the Lord are riding on those horses to defeat, just like this thing is a, a a high tower in a place of adversity. Lord, you are our defender. We sang about it this morning. Would you be a strong tower for us? And Lord, we are waiting for the earth and the spirit to quake together to see your move. Do it right now in Jesus' name. Lord's touching many of you right now. Holy Spirit, come with intensity and power. Set people free. Scott Pearson, I know you're kind of there. Can you lay hands on this young man? The Lord's about to do something significant for him. Yeah, right there. That just, just take that presence right there. Father, we just all around the room, let your presence fall. Let your fire touch. God, we're all in different places. We, we've been talking about the fear of the Lord. We've been talking about holiness. We've been talking about being prepared in shaking for the visitation of your glory. We're actually asking for a habitation. Lord, we are not content without the, the fire of the Shekinah glory in our midst, Lord. We need Aaron's rod in that ark, which is missing right now. We need that because it's the budding of promises that come to fulfillment. Lord, we thank you for that right now. And we need the manna, which sustains us supernatural provision day by day that was in there. Father, we need this and we need the mercy seat of God. Come, minister to us. Move with your power, move with your spirit. I think some of you need to actually take authority to, to just, yeah, I see the shofar will blow it a second. I feel like if there's a prodigal you want to come home, a family member, there's an opening right now for the Lord to send forth his warriors and his angelic host to call back from the north to the south to take out of Babylon to restore. And he again wants to establish a wall of fire around them. And it's like Joshua, Zechariah 3 where it says, um, I am removing your iniquity from you and I will clothe you with rich robes. And so behold, I am bringing forth my servant, the branch, the Nazarene. For behold, the stone you've laid before Joshua. These are the eyes of the Lord, the sevenfold spirit. And I will remove the iniquity in a single day. So Lord, do that for our prodigals right now. If you need somebody, a family member, cry out audibly. We're just, get, we're out of the box here. Cry out and ask the Lord right now to send his spirit the branch of the Lord to set some captives free. And Pastor Dan, if you've got something, I, I'll bring you up with the mic. We're just gonna minister this for a minute. Lord, do this, hear our prayer. Send your watching angels to listen for what we're crying out. Lord, break off depression and discouragement that is holding some of your people back. Lord, break off the iniquities that are holding people in bondage right now. The blood of Jesus is victorious. It is powerful over all things. Thank you, Father. Send forth the word to bring the prodigals back in the name of Jesus. Lord, I pray you'd strengthen the weak knees right now. Those of you that have weak knees, I want you to, I know we're talking weak knees in the spirit. You feel like you've not prayed, you've not interceded, you're like, you've lost, you're discouraged. It's like the enemy has just been whispering to you, you've missed it, it's over. The, the Lord wants to strengthen you. It's an Isaiah 35 moment where there'll be streams in the desert Let's read that. It just says, strengthen the weak hands. Isaiah 35, 3 
Say to those, uh, make firm the feeble knees. Say to those who are fearful hearted, be strong, do not fear. Behold, your God will come with vengeance and with the recompense of God, he will come to save you. The eyes of the blind shall be opened. The ears of the deaf shall be unstopped. The lame shall leak like deer and the tongues of the dumb shall sing. For waters of my spirit shall birth forth in the wilderness and streams in the desert and the thirsty land spring of waters and there will be a highway there, a road, it should be called the highway of holiness. So Lord, do that right now. If there's an area of deliverance, there's some place you want freedom, just put your voice to it again and ask the Lord for freedom right now. Lord, I need freedom over. Speak it out. Lord, I need freedom over. Freedom. Lord, hear their prayers. Be that wall of fire. Wow. Encounter. God, we need our own burning bush right now, personally. We need that burning bush. I feel like the Lord is saying those areas of doubt. Who am I, Lord, to go? Who am I, Lord? Like, Lord, you don't understand. What, what if they don't listen to me? What if the dream is too big? What if Pharaoh is too strong? And the Lord says, tell them I am is with you. Um, I, I'm the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. I am the God of living, and Jesus has paid the price who is this enemy that ridicules and mocks you because he says this day, rise up and go. Rise up, get past those, those, those things in your mind that hold you back. Lord, give us a burning bush where the presence does not consume anything but just things that don't belong to us. I'm gonna look to my staff if any of you have some things to minister. Uh, Pastor Dan's in the house, we're just... I don't want to miss the moment of encounter. Feel free to go around. Um, Beth Sage, the Lord's just going to just fall on you and your husband in a significant way right now in Jesus' name. There it is. Ho, ho, empower, empower. There's going to be a song, a prophetic voice in your life that's going to come forth with clarity like a resounding gong. Thank you, Jesus. We're just going to wait a minute. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's it. They're laughing. Let's just read a text on that. <laughs> Psalm chapter 2. <laughs> Psalm 2. Let's do it. Why do the nations rage and the people plot a vain thing? Why do the kings of the earth set themselves and the rulers take counsel together against the Lord and his anointed, saying, let us break their bonds in pieces and cast away their cords from us? God, or we've done that as a nation. But he who sits in the heavens shall laugh. The Lord shall hold them in derision. Then he shall speak to them in his wrath and distress and deep pleasure. Behold, I have set my king on my holy hill in Zion. I will declare, the Lord said to me, you are my son. Today I have begotten you. Ask of me and I will give you the nations for your inheritance and the ends of the earth for your possession. And you will break your oppressors with a rod of iron. You shall dash them to pieces like a potter's vessel. Therefore, O wise kings of the earth, be instructed, you judges, serve the Lord with fear and rejoice with trembling. Kiss the son, lest he be angry and you perish in the way. For when his wrath is kindled but a little, but blessed are those who put their trust in you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. So Lord, let a spirit of joy and laughter, let the Lord laugh over the enemies right now that have come against your church because it's a trifle, it's a small thing that you're to, to have the Lord deal with those things that are oppressing the people of God. 
We ask you for fullness of deliverance. Sandy, do you have a word to pray? Let me get you the mic. Thank you, Father. Uh, I declare and decree the word of the Lord over Bridgeway and over this region, Isaiah 54. Enlarge the side of your tent to make room for more children. Stretch out the curtains of your dwellings. Do not spare them. Lengthen the tent ropes and make your pegs, stakes firm in the ground. For you will spread out to the right and to the left and your descendants will take possession of nations and will inherit deserted cities. Do not fear, for you will not be put to shame. And do not feel humiliated or ashamed, for you will not be disgraced. For you will forget the shame of your youth and will no longer remember the disgrace of your widowhood. I believe Peter that uh, hold it that way. There I believe go. Peter that uh, these wells, it's not just the well of healing, and I believe the Lord will show as as your you and Gwen and the staff and everyone are are uh, asking the Lord the the well of the prophetic, the well of worship. Yeah. When you go back, when you go back when Holy Spirit was really moving in those days, the thing is, is it is for us, it is for us individually, but it is for where we're going. Mm. It is for the city. It mm -hmm. is for the region. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yes, Lord, we say yes. <laughs> uh. And uh, I, um, I also was thinking about the city. Yes, and Lord. when the city closed down to pray, yeah. when the business leaders in, in the early 1900s, yep. and there's something about the, our wells and the wells of the city that are going to merge. Yes, and Lord. we are going to bring forth God's destiny in this city, in this region. In Jesus' name. There's a few more words. We're just going to let this come. This morning I was just in prayer and the Lord began to speak to me about Pastor Peter and about Bridgeway. I was supposed to be at another location, which came this morning and the Lord said that he was reopening the wells of this house that were tied back to Jefferson High School, back to Roa Israel and here. And I heard Isaiah 40 early this morning, God says that the warfare over this house is being broken. That there was a significant war against this house because of the assignment over this root structure. Can we all just stand to our feet? When Peter started really ministering a minute ago, I felt the Lord all of a sudden just take Bridgeway, understanding Bridgeway's regional anointing yes, yes. that this That's house is to prop up the canopy of glory in Colorado. Yes. That this house is this morning, as he was sharing, as he was moving in the spirit, I felt that all of a sudden this church was put in a position of Aaron to stand between the living and the dead, that God was about to break the plague over Colorado, that he was about to send his glory over this state. And I felt an anointing to intercede for a few minutes and to begin to cry out Isaiah 16 over Colorado, that God is going to come upon Colorado in his mercy. That, listen, Colorado, America does not deserve revival. We actually deserve wrath. But God is going to have mercy upon this nation. He's going to have mercy upon Colorado. So in the name of Jesus, Father, we stand today. Let's lift our hands as intercessors. We stand today, God, between the living and the dead. Father, we declare a great outpouring over Colorado. Father, we declare the curse is being broken through the blood of the Lamb. We declare today the blood of the Lamb breaks the curse, breaks the iniquity in the name of Jesus. This passage of Scripture really came up in my heart. Oh, Lord, revive the work in the midst of your years. 
in the midst of the years, make it known. God, we deserved wrath, but Lord, would you remember mercy? And then the prophet said, I saw God coming. The Holy One came from Mount Paran. His glory covered the heavens, and the earth was filled with his praise. His brightness was like the light, and he had rays flashing forth from his hand, and there his power was revealed. Father, we declare that all of Colorado shall be shaken under the glory of the Lord. We declare this is the hour for Jesus to be made manifest. We declare the hand of the Lord to come out of Colorado to declare there's the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the earth. Father, I bless, I bless Bridgeway. I declare the warfare over this house. It is broken in the name of Jesus. God, I declare that every well, every revival well is breaking open today. I call forth the waters, the living waters, the fire of God in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus, God, reveal your glory. There's two rivers that God is releasing through this house. He's releasing them without measure. It's the Daniel 7 River. When, da when Daniel was looking upon the Ancient of Days, the Ancient of Days and fire was clothing him. And his throne was a fire. And underneath the throne was coming rivers of fire. The Lord says, I'm releasing my fire through this house. The fire of my presence. The spirit of burning on the inner man. God says, upon your hearts and upon the hearts of your children, the fire upon their hearts will never go out. We declare the fire on the altars of our children to never go out in the name of Jesus. Never go out, oh God. Let the fire burn on the altars of our hearts, God. In Ezekiel 47, the prophet looks and he sees a river coming out from beneath the temple. So the throne, there was fire. And under the temple, there was rivers of water. Father, I declare the rivers of living water that are flowing in this house Every place those rivers touch will spring forth into life. God, we declare over Denver, you shall live and not die. We declare rivers of living water in our cities and in our streets in the name of Jesus. And Father, we prophesy over Pastor Peter. God, the warfare against his voice, it is broken. The warfare against the assignment to this house, it is broken. Father, I bless this man of God. I declare the voice of many waters to flow from him in the name of Jesus. I declare rivers of living water to flow out of his belly. Father, in an hour where a man must arise, the sound of a prophet to come forth for a city. Father, I declare a new sound to be released out of his belly. A new frequency, O oh God, for hearts to be gripped, God, in the name of Jesus. Lord, awaken the dead church. Awaken the sleeping bride. Awaken our denominations. Revive the church in the name of Jesus. And I bless Pastor Peter. And we declare the warfare is broken. Broken in the name of Jesus. Every well to be opened, God. Every well to be opened. Every well. Colorado, we call you to life. Colorado, we call you to life. We call the church to live again. God, let the heartbeat of heaven come into every church. God, let blood flow through every church again. Let the rivers of water, let the blood of heaven, let the fire of God flow through the church again. God, revive the work. Revive the work of your hands in this year's, oh God. We declare that everything is about to change. Everything is shifting. Nothing will be the same again. Father, we bless it in the name of Jesus. But I've heard so strong lately, God says, everything that's been hidden, I'm bringing it to the light. 
everything that's been hidden. God says, I'm bringing to light every act of unrighteousness in our government officials. He's bringing things to light that have been hidden in secrecy. There's a lifting of the skirts. Jeremiah 14 talks about there's going to be a lifting of the skirts. God is going to expose everything hidden. He's going to release his righteousness. He's going to release his glory. And God also says, everything that's been hidden in secret in you in the realm of righteousness, he's going to bring it to the light. Everything you've done unto him in this hour, he says, you've prayed in secret, I'm going to reward openly. You've fasted in secret, I'm going to reward openly. You have given in secret, and I'm going to give, and I'm going to reward openly. God says, everything this house has done in hiddenness, in the realm of righteousness, God is going to bring it to the light. And we do declare this house is expanding to the left and to the right. I declare the tent stakes and the poles of this house to be strengthened in the name of Jesus. I declare the foundations of this house shall never be shaken in the name of Jesus. I declare the only one found worthy to shake this house is the glory of the Lord. Let your glory shake this house in the name of Jesus. Just bless you, Pastor Peter, for your stand, for your stand, and for your immense love. It's, it's like the Lord says that you wanted several times to quit, but Lord, how can I quit when I love a city so much? How can I quit when I love people so much? And you've stood, and you faced giants, and there's been giants on these wells, and you stood, and you fought. The warfare is being broken, and I declare the glory of God without measure. And listen, this is going to be done by one thing. Isaiah 9, 7 says, governments are resting upon my son. Every high place sits upon my son, and God says, this shall be fulfilled by my zeal. It's the zeal of the Lord that shall perform this in this day, and we declare the zeal of God over Colorado. We declare the zeal of God over Bridgeway Church, and I declare the zeal of God over you and your family and your children in the name of Jesus. You are blessed. This house is blessed. And we bless Colorado. And we declare over our city officials, over our mayors, we declare over our governor that, Lord, you're removing the heart of stone. And you will give them a heart of flesh. And, God, you shall give them a heart to know you in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I don't think we're quite done. I'd ask the Lord for a trumpet to be blown here. There was one blown at the 222 conference in the Springs. One was blown at the Converge conference. I said, we need one blown in our house, Lord. I thought it might come at the prophetic conference, but the Lord just chose today, I think, to, to sort of blow a trumpet announcing what the trumpet is. Um, was it, uh, it was, was it Dutch sheets or... Um, one of them saw a trumpet, a golden trumpet, that an angel was blowing, and it said Colorado on the side. And it was being blown to open the gates of revival. It was to be preceded by repentance. When that repentance hit the 222 conference, when Dutch was speaking Sunday night, I knew the trumpet had been blown. When repentance hit, it converged on Friday night. I knew that the trumpet had been blown, and my prayer is that we've had enough repentance over the last few weeks that the trumpet just got blown. So, yay. Thank you, Lord. Scott, you, some of my staff seems to have words, and, and one, of, one of our guys at the prophetic. Yeah. I, and it just fits in with everything. I just kept hearing the word suddenly. I feel like there, there, there is going to be these, these, these waters, these wells. There is pressure that the kingdom of God is propelling it with, with such force. And, and I don't know if you're aware of this, but, but, but water is actually the most powerful instrument in all of natural creation. When it is accelerated, at, at a per, it can cut through every conceivable thing, including dime, it'll go right through it. And I just feel like there's this piece that God's zeal, his force, his suddenness, the, he is going to literally propel this. It's going to be, a, I don't know if I want to call it against our will, but there's this sense that it's almost like he is going to put us in like a catapult and launch us. And, and he, he's asking who will get in. 
Who's willing to get, who's willing to be so suddenly propelled forward? He's inviting us to be part of that group that says, I will go, I will be launched, I'll be propelled at such crazy places. Lord, we will go anywhere you want us to go. We will go into any place. We will say whatever you want us to say. Lord, we choose to enter into that place. Lord, launch us with that suddenly, just as you did in Acts 2-2, where it said, suddenly, like a mighty rushing wind, the Holy Spirit came. Suddenly, suddenly, Lord. Father, we can't prepare for that. We just say, do it. Just do it, Lord. Just do it. We trust you, Lord. We put all that we are at your feet. And Father, I just declare with my own lips, Father, I have longed my whole life for this moment. Thank you. He's about to go to the nations again. There's a a call on Scott for the nations. Just extend your hands to him real quick. Whoa. He's about to go to Zambia. Oh, is it Tuesday or Wednesday with, with Daniel? And uh, Lord, yeah, you want to, what's that? Rick as well. Yeah, Rick, once you get here, we're just going to, But I know there's a commissioning on, on Scott for the nations right now. Lord, we thank you for these that are all already being propelled today um, to the nations. Uh, there's going to be several of you propelled into the marketplace. Fire of the Holy Spirit in a new way. Birth it in Jesus' name. Thank you, Father. Scott, you're going to be seeing some signs and wonders. I want to encourage you, when you preach in Kitway especially, I feel like there's going to be an opening of a realm where you're going to get the opportunity to, 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 to steward a miracle. So, Father, we just thank you for signs and wonders to accompany these as they go. Thank you, Father. For Zambia also, I think it's Kenya and Tanzania that Rick's going to. We pray you'd open it up. In Jesus' name, thank you for his weeks-long assignment. In the name of Jesus. Your words? I have a word for them. Yeah, so when I was praying uh, earlier, I saw a picture specifically for Daniel, but I believe it's for this team, and if anybody wants to grab it in the room, I just saw Daniel, when you speaking, it was it went out of your mouth like fire, and it like parted the Red Sea, like parted the Dead Sea. And it was like, when the people are trapped, they have nowhere to go. When you speak, may fire come out of your mouth and make a way for the impossible to happen, for people to have a, a way, a, a, a solid ground for their feet to walk on. And the verse with that, Jeremiah 5.14 because you speak this words, behold, I will make my words in your mouth like fire. So, Lord, we just declare, Lord, fire-breathing saints in this house and in this team going out, Lord, that when we speak, the fire out of our mouths, Lord, would clear the path, Lord, for the people to walk, would clear the path, would make the way for the impossible in the name of Jesus. <laughs> Church, you, you got to hear that. That was for you as well. Fire breathing, Holy Spirit carrying, mobile carriers, the ark of the presence. Out of your mouth, you heard it declared, rivers of fire from this house. So Lord, we declare over everyone here, everyone watching online, it, 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 uh, it goes to them too, Lord, that the fire would go. I pray for marketplace fire, fire in businesses, fire upon leaders, heads of state. We just say that... Some of these will be a voice of fire in dark places that will open up wells of revival in, in, in multiple places. I thank you. If that's for you, just like put your hand up. I feel like there's several of you that you know you're supposed to be a person who's going to speak the word with fire 
where you go. And so we declare that, Jeremiah, what was it, 512? 514 verse over you right now that their words in their mouth will be like a fire that can break open rocks, that can change spiritual atmospheres, that will set a course of a, a spiritual climate change where they live, work, and play, and where you're sending them on assignment. I feel like there's several of you that are going to speak to you like uh, really wealthy people, like the guys that would attend Davos, Switzerland. Like there's going to be some of you speaking to very high level people to open the wells of revival. So, Lord, I just bless that voice on some of these right now in Jesus' name. Hmm. Okay, we'll take a breather in the spirit, but I'm not quite sure we're done quite yet. Um, Greg, I think your word is next. Do you want to get up where they can see? Just let Daniel and Scott stay here. You can stand up there. I must say I'm in constant awe of how the Lord weaves narrative threads together, starting with everyone who has spoken so far, and this tags on to, um, excuse me, what Scott was saying. This is to Bridgeway. Are you ready to embrace the new, leaving the old as past? Climb, Bridgeway, climb, climb, climb. Continue to climb the mountain before you. Do not stop, come what may, I cannot climb it for you, but I will climb it with you. Every step, every boulder you cross, every stream you ford, I make your way straight. The time of siloed anointings is coming to an end, and a time of mixed anointings has begun. I am doing the mixing, bringing about the blends of new wine, and you need to accomplish that you need to accomplish my work. I'm filling the new wineskins with my new blends of my new wine. Soon, there will be nowhere you will be able to run that you will not see the manifestation of my power. You are about to be immersed in the deep end of the pool. You think? Kayla Montoya, are you in the house still? Do you have a word? No, she's coming up though. You don't know. Okay. Scott thought you might have a word. If you don't, that's fine. No pressure. Yeah, okay. Why don't you just pray for her, Scott? Just go over and lay hands on her. There's, she's about to be a spokesman in a new way. And the, the little one that she's carrying is going to be a spokesman. Just, there it is. Take it. Yeah. Yeah. Holy Spirit's about to really touch. That little one's going to come out knowing the Lord really early. There it is, right there. Thank you for your fire, the spokesman anointing on her right now in Jesus' name. And on the little one inside. Thank you, Father. Hey, if you're new with us, this this how it's all right. It's good. It's holy. We're just yielding to the Holy Spirit. <laughs> Anyone else? I'm kind of looking. You got a word here to pray? Yeah. For people to take. We'll, we'll give them a chance to take it. How many people? You got a word? Okay. I trust the Holy Spirit in those that I know. Because I, I understand where they are. Just so you know, it's not loosey-goosey. I, I, the, these, these are vetted folks that I understand. So, by the way, right now you can drink from the wine. The wine bottles are open for the new. As you're just kind of sitting here, I realize there's, when things come like this, there's like ebbs and uh, flow and energy. But we want the fullness of what God's releasing uh, to us but feel free to just take a drink of that new wine. Some of you need the new wine of the new season. And uh, 
don't declare the old is better. You need the new wine. So, Michelle, here's, here's the mic. So while we were just listening to the prophetic and Pastor Peter earlier, I saw a boomerang. And I felt like there are things from the past good things that seem like they have been lost and will never come back, but it's actually coming back around again. And that God is bringing those things that seem lost or stolen from us or even uh, have gone inert but are actually of him, uh, that his glory and his power are bringing them back. And it's not by might, not by power. It's by his Holy Spirit. Yeah, that's good. I know, I got to put the glasses so on. So this morning before all of this began, in uh, worship, I was hearing the word cosmic collision. And he said to steward the atmosphere because the atmosphere may, may seem silent, but it's in the crescendo of creation's voice. The catalyst, my voice, is to be released and it will bring a violent and explosive release to the day. So in Genesis, the dove hovered over the deep and the voice of God said, let there be light. And then we go to Hebrews 11:3, and it says, faith empowers us to see that the universe was created and beautifully coordinated by the power of God's word. He spoke and the invisible realm gave birth to all that is seen. So this is cosmic birthing. Speak the word you hear and release it boldly. Whoa. And then through faith's power, continuing on in Hebrews, they conquered kingdoms and established true justice. Their faith fastened onto their promise and pulled them into reality. It was faith that shut the mouth of lions and put the power of the raging fire and caused many to escape death by the sword. Although weak in their faith, they, that imparted power made them strong. Sp faith sparked courage within them and they became mighty warriors in battle, pulling armies from other realms into battle array. So it's a time of cosmic birthing. And I know that could sound kind of new agey, but let's grab it for the kingdom of heaven right now because he is birthing a work and he's gonna be a catalyst through your voice. So Lord, we just declare that our voice will align with the voice of heaven and release that explosive catalyst to bring forth all that we have been contending for, for the prodigal, for the demolishing of obstacles and kingdoms that stand in opposition to the kingdom of heaven. So Lord, I just proclaim that the roar is gonna come up out of your church. It's gonna be a very intentional and specific roar. It's gonna be targeted in the uh, areas where it sees targets. And it's gonna be releasing the birthing catalytic power Hour of your glory to come on earth. Yeah, I just had uh, a word that went along with that, and I just saw that uh, man new mandates were falling in the room today. I feel like there's actually new assignments, creative initiatives, creative expressions that God is birthing and that are falling across the room. So if you feel like there's been dreams on your heart that have been burning for a long time and you just haven't quite felt the release, I feel like the Lord's saying it's time to go. It's time to release those new assignments, those new initiatives, those creative expressions for a new wave of God's spirit and revival to come forth in this time. So Lord, we just thank you for that based off Isaiah 43, 19. It says, behold, I am doing a new thing. Now it springs forth. Do you not perceive it? I will make a way in the wilderness and rivers in the desert. So God, we just pray for these unique expressions to spring forth right now to bring rivers in the dry places in the desert lands, God, that you would spring it forth and release um, your body into the creative um, initiatives that you have for them in this time. In Jesus' name, amen. So... 
I have a word that goes with that from earlier and the one from before. And, and as I was sitting in the back, I just heard the Lord say that there have been some of you who have been like asking for time, like which, like when, when should I do it? When should, and I kept hearing him say, now, now is the time. Seize the time. It is now. Go. And so if you've been waiting for a word, it is go and go now. Um, the other word I had was uh, in Hebrews also 11, 11. By faith, Sarah herself also received strength to conceive seed. By what? By faith. She received strength to conceive seed. And she bore a child when she was past the age because she judged him, God, faithful, who had promised so right now, I encourage the body of Christ right now, strengthen yourself in your faith. The word of God does not fall short. God, we thank you, and I just pray that people will grab hold of what you said is theirs, and they will renew their mind, that they will pull out the promises from years past that you have spoken over their life, and they will attach faith to the promises that you have already said are theirs, in Jesus' name. Yes. Jeremiah 32 says, Behold, I am the Lord, the God of all flesh. Is anything too hard for me? I think we just need to repent for limiting what we think that God can do. Jesus said that with man, this is impossible. But with God, all things are possible. So Father, right now, in Jesus' name, I repent, Father, for limiting you and what I think that you can do, Father. And I just say that you are the Lord God of all flesh and that nothing, nothing, nothing is too difficult for you, Lord. And we just thank you for it, Lord. We thank you for seeing the impossible come to pass. We thank you, Lord, for bringing back those Lazarus dreams, Father, that we thought had died, that we thought it was impossible for them to come to pass. But with you, Lord, Everything is possible. Thank you, Lord. Um, our sister here had a vision of water spouts bursting up along the front range. What? Oh, yeah. <laughs> and um, she saw that Bridgeway was one of those water spouts. And so I just want to declare today that the, the water spout of the Holy Spirit is just bursting forth through Bridgeway to do his work. Uh, I just felt like God was saying, reminding me that he is the King of Kings. He is the government that is higher than the government that we see in our land. And I just, I felt like he said, zoning doesn't apply to him. Like our, this is our land because it's his land. This is his land and he's giving us the land both in the spiritual realm and the physical realms. And so I just, I just claim that for your people, God, the land that you are giving us is your land to do how you please because you are a God who owns the cattle on a thousand hills. You have all the resources and you give us the resources to God. And so we just receive everything that you have. There is no limitations. There is no zoning that stands in our way. There is no walls, no, no borders. You are expanding our tent pegs. Father, because you want us to take over the land and walk in your ways and release your kingdom. Thank you.
Oh, she has no idea how significant that is, actually. <laughs> Who's believing God for property and houses? Just put your hands up. Lord, we just... <laughs> Lord, just release that right now. Just on, on ridiculous faith, like stepping out of the boat faith for believing for the impossible. Lord, we do repent for being those people that just have limited our mindsets as... Roger shed, Lord, we repent for those limiting beliefs that you're not able. So, Lord, we just bless all of these that are believing you for properties right now, for increase, for businesses. Lord, especially, we don't care that rates are 7% right now. They're, in the kingdom, money can be released. And so we just bless everyone that's believing right now for increase, for dreams, for like properties that are, have kingdom purposes. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. We're dreaming for the Continental Theater, by the way, the old, if you, and we just wonder if that's coming our way. So, Father, we just thank you for each of these believing. Whew. Yeah, and the presence is exhausting at times. So. I wonder if we should have the worship team, if they're still here, make their way up. Or, um, I think there's a place of, um, and it could be other worship. There it is. Scott, are you just releasing that? There's going to be a release for property people right here. Just make your way here. I feel like, Scott, are there property angels like there? There's, there's a property angel, something there. He's... So just kind of gather in here. We'll have different people kind of jam for a minute. Um, when things like this happen, we need to thank the Lord. We need to just really look to him. Obviously, it feels a little chaotic. We just don't quite know how God's working and doing, but we're just going to uh, bless this. We'll go back into worship. It looks like maybe our online is shut off. So if so, um, we just bless them. Again, Lord, we just ask for increase for property right here for these that are doing this. And team, when you feel ready, just uh, whatever God gives you. All honors, good. Guys, they're going to bring all honor up back there, Eve. You know the word all honor? Uh, So as they're singing, they're going to be singing uh, all honor. Um, this is the word. While the musician, uh, the Elijah called out and said, bring me a musician. And it came while the musicians played that the hand and power of the Lord came on Elisha. And he said, thus says the Lord, the valley, the Erevah, the dry place will be filled with trenches. For thus says the Lord, you will not see wind or rain that, that valley will be filled with water so that you and your cattle and other animals may drink this is but a simple thing in the sight of the Lord and he will hand over the Moabites your enemies to you and you will strike every fortified city and cut down every good tree of water in the enemy's camp and in the morning when the sacrifice was offered, suddenly the water came miraculously and the area of Edom and the country was filled with water. So Lord, as we sing this, we declare water will fill the dry place. The Ezekiel 47 river will flow in the land. The river of Revelation 22 will start flowing the presence of the Lord that you will come with power and do the impossible, Lord, for where we need it right now in Jesus' name. If you need to be dismissed, feel free to make your way out. We're just gonna worship and uh, we'll start this with a trumpet sound. Lord, again, we as a church are welcoming your presence.